Hello, uh, so this year has been a pretty interesting one for Eugene, with the release of an entirely new IP, we were sent back to 1944 fighting Germans in the Second World War. But instead of throwing fake wooden tanks against fake wooden bases, instead we got a war game like RTS game set during the Second World War. And so let's take a look at what happened this year. So it's pretty much going to be a similar yearly recap like we did last year with Wargame. So, let's get right to it. So, nothing happened at the start of the year. Really, nothing. There were some rumours going around on what the next title could be from Eugene Systems. Most players were hoping it would be a Wargame 4, and yeah, rumours around that it might be a World War 2 title. And it was a World War 2 title, called Steel Division, Normandy, 1944. Some were happy, some were not. Set during an iconic and probably overused setting of Normandy during the Second World War, we were promised a game like Wargame, but not like Wargame, we have improvements over Wargame. Over the next few weeks, we got information leaks about how the map control system works, the vision system, and even a gameplay trailer. A few weeks after the game was announced, there was a VIP close alpha testing session, which was too bad I had to remove the 262 in the STG show. So April saw us the pre-order beta, available to be purchased like I did of Royal Game Red Dragon and Airline Battle. You could either pick from a regular edition of the game, or a deluxe edition, which included such awesome items such as wallpapers, form avatars, ringtones, and ace skins. You know I got a deluxe edition for the ringtones alone. The pre-order beta allows the majority of us to actually play the game, and honestly, I found it great. The new infantry and morale, map control, and phase mechanics worked well and fixed the major issues that I had with War Games gameplay. The major issue of the beta was it just was not that much content. You had four divisions and two maps to pick from the start, and every two weeks I'd had two more divisions and maybe a map or two. So, considering this was the pre-release of the game, or really an early access, you could say, it got a bit dull to play very quickly. There's only so many times you can fight against French Greyhound Rosses before wanting to bash your own head in. During this month, we slowly got more beta content to last us till release. Also, around this time, you are pumping out quite a lot of Division dev blogs, and I have to say, if you have not read them, I highly recommend it. They are really well written and do a fantastic job discussing the history of every single division and giving you an insight in why they are structured and how they play out in game. So really good job Mad Max. They are really good pieces of editorial content. But it was inevitable and on the 23rd of May, Steel Division was finally fully released. We got all 18 divisions, three campaigns and a bunch more maps. To quickly summarise my thoughts on the release content, the campaigns were pretty alright, but they had terrible voice acting. Maps were good, no bridge choke points, and a lot of room to manoeuvre. Yo, they were a bit flat, it's northern France after all. New divisions were fun, none are too overpowered at release. And the main menu is absolutely shit. Just, it's not fun, this is not what I want. From my main menu, I look at Airland Battle. Look at this. Now, this makes me feel like that I'm jumping into the Cold Draw as a commander and I gotta beat back some Soviet commies. Yes, one right here, yo. I mean, we got a slideshow in the background that repeats every 20 seconds and some buttons that are just, yeah, it's pretty basic to say the least. But the people played the game and liked it. But some people played the game and did not like it. A lot of the war game community were pretty upset because really they just wanted more war game. They wanted more Cold War units and they just wanted a Cold War set and really. And they saw a lot of the mechanics dumb down the war game style gameplay. Yo, I highly disagree. So with any RTS game, quickly after release, everyone will probably be demanding a balance patch. And the same thing for Steel Division, as there were a lot of kinks to be ironed out. So Eugene hyped up and gave us a justice for all balance patch, but it really just had a bunch of minor bug updates and some minor division updates too. 
So main to change has been the AT gun stress nerf and the heavy machine gun HP nerf. Also around this time, 3rd Fauci and 101st were really the go-to divisions for 1v1s, and they were nerfed a little bit, and rightfully so. They were a little bit too powerful, especially in a 1v1 setting. Also, 2nd Infantry was very good at this time, due to how effective highly vetted Ranger Infantry was. But he did not fix some of the major issues and major concerns that the community had, such as AA being pretty weak source, and overuse of off-map artillery. And then there was the rule of raw, the, the rule of raw, the rule of raw, the rule, the rule of raw trailer, which really sort of came out before the game released, in my opinion. Also, the Duelist update was released towards the end of the month, and they flipped some maps 90 degrees, we got some more bug fixes, and some other small patches such as off-map artillery nerf, minor AA buffs, and a German autocannon nerf. So, during the summer of the game's release, we had quite a few tournaments. ESL hosted one, Protojoka hosted a bunch, and a website called Countdown Gaming hosted some too. I like tournaments, and they were pretty well done considering the low player per count, but none of them were heli rush, so it has an improvement. Around this time, yo, the player base took a big dip. Well, I can think of many reasons, right? But if anything, anything that I could attribute to the main reason that Steel Division didn't succeed are these options right here. The goddamn matchmaking options out of everything. Everything. I think this is the main reason why the game failed to pick up or really keep the player base. Because here's what happened. This is the new player experience for you. If you're a new guy, you know, you're a solo player, you just played through the tutorial, maybe played through some of the campaign missions, you want to give multiplayer a shot. So, you do quick play, you play some 1v1s, you know, you build your division, you maybe read online what some good division compositions are, and you play some 1v1s, and you all get destroyed because you are a very new player, even if you're playing against other new players, you're probably not going to do all the way out great, and also the matchmaking system may match you up against people who are much better at the game than you. So you play a few 1v1s, you're not doing too great, you want something a little less stressful, so you decide, hey, let's go play some team games, let's play some 2v2, 3v3s, 4v4s, as there's less oh, I need to do, I don't have to hold the entirety of the map by myself. You try doing that through quick play, you can't get a match, so you have to go through the custom lobby system. So you join a custom lobby, you know, you get some players, and you play. Now, if you're connect into a custom lobby, which is most likely going to happen because it takes quite a while to set up a match by yourself, is you're going to be fighting against a stacked team, all on Discord or TeamSpeak, and have much better experience compared to you and your random friends you just met two minutes ago. And so you play, and you will get absolutely stomped because they're using team-based strategies to annihilate you, and they're much better. And also your random players may be from Latvia and can't speak English, and will disconnect halfway through the match because they have the same ping that you have on Mars. And so you do this a few times, you join some custom lobbies, maybe host a custom lobby, but you're on a stack team joins, and you just get destroyed. And you're not really having that much fun, because you keep losing. So you decide, okay, let's go play some 10v10. So you join a 10v10 lobby, you know, ready for it to fill up, and you play. Now, one of the things about the 10v10 is it's absolute chaos. Your impact on the match isn't that huge. So it gives you some time to learn and play the game and get used to units and how your divisions play some rod. But it's just so chaotic and hectic that it doesn't really feel like any actual strategy or tactics are being used. And it's more of just a giant spam match. So you play a few 10v10s. And you get kind of bored, as it's like playing, you know, single-player Age of Empires, where you just build up for the first 40 minutes, and then you get a bunch of units, and then you just attack, move into the enemy spawn or village, and then win. And so, after trying run v one not having fun, playing some smaller team games, and keep getting destroyed by teams, and by playing chaotic 10v10s, and it's just not really that strategic, it's meant to be a strategic tactical RTS game, you get bored, and you leave. And I think that's what happened to a lot of the new solo players. So you could really blame one of the key components 
obvious argument is that the stack teams are ruining the new player experience. And you are right. But here's the perspective if you are on a stack team. So you get online, you get your buddies together, and you want to play some Steel Division, you want to play some team matches. Uh, you try doing quick play with your buddies, but you can't get another team match because the quick play system is terrible. And so you host a custom lobby because there's probably not any custom lobbies that can custom three or four of you, especially if it's already filled up a bit and the teams are a little bit spread out. And so you host a custom lobby, you rate, people join, some people leave, and they join again. You play the match, and you play the match, and you just completely destroy them. They disconnect halfway through, you already got like a plus two point advantage, six minutes in the game, and you win. You do this a few more times, and you win, and you win, because there's just a lot of new players, and yeah, you can't really find another team easily. And so you keep doing that, and then you get bored, because you're, you're just winning, there's no actual strategy, you are completely ripe in the floor of your opponents. You're not going to play 10v10s, because, yeah, it's just chaotic, and you can't really do too much team stuff in 10v10s. So you may think, hey, you team bastards, why don't you just play an in-house match together? Yeah, and you can actually get a proper, strategic, fun match with actual some tension. But the problem with always doing in-house matches is, one, you may not want to fight against your friends all the time, because... It's much more fun to work with him instead of calling their 25 pounder artillery bullshit. And number two is all your friends may not be at the same skill level. There may be an odd number of you. And so you can't really do an in-house all out effectively. So if you're a new player, you're not having a good time. You can't get a decent match with decently skilled players. And if you are an existing group of people, you're not going to get decently skilled players to play against most of the time and it's just yet the difficulty of trying to get you know the right people with the other right people to play a proper fun match with actual tension instead of complete pub stomps or getting pub stomped really hindered the game quite a bit and it is because they spread out the player base initially over the quick play over the ranked custom system and over the custom lobby and also 10v10 so really four different rays when really it should have been only one or two company of heroes for example you just get your buddies together you queue up and that's it you you get a 2v2 you get a 1v1 depends on how many you are the matchmaking system works well but also the problem with steel division is that there wasn't really a bigger a player base to begin with, especially after the matchmaking system didn't work, it's much smaller of a player base, and it just continued to work even more poorly. Especially considering that you couldn't queue up as both sides, and you could only queue up as one side. So you have a team of four queuing up for Axis, and another team of four queuing up for Axis. You're never going to be able to get to play against each other, because they're not going to know, hey, someone's searching as Axis, if we search up as allies, we're going to get a match. And that really hurt the game quite a bit. Because especially for a new player, it's already a rather difficult game to learn. Because this is so vastly different from your company of heroes and Hearts of Iron. And if you're not getting good matches, if you're not learning from your mistakes and just keep getting thrown around like a king tiger that's been flanked by a bunch of hellcats, you're just going to stop playing the game. But yeah, overall, in the end of the day, less players were playing, and it was harder to get a match. This month, sure, the Ren the River Runs Deep update, with quite a few major changes, being veterancy nerfs, infantry flamethrower nerfs, major AA buffs, and infantry suppressing buffs. Also around this time, I'd say the 3rd Fouch Jager, 2nd Infantry, and 101st Airborne Holy Meta Trinity, really became a bit obsolete due to the changes mentioned above. But there would always be your 17th SS and 15th Scottish divisions always, yeah, always being useful. But soon, there'd be a new meta division king in town. As well, the servers went down for a few days. Coffins were passed around as an already dead game was now officially dead. They came back and finally reworked a friends list into the 21st century by having it been connected to your Steam account. 
thank god. The start of September saw the Division Bell updates, which finally had individual changes for every single division, as the previous update was just a general update with no single division changes. They're pretty good overall. They also showed us the content roadmap around this time, planning to add a bunch of new free update content, new game modes, and even a paid DLC later in the month. Shouldn't be trick or treaters. I mean, I live in England too. Who the hell is going to be bloody trick or treating in September? I mean, I'm going to use the same joke twice now, aren't I? Okay, let me go open the door. Ah, Jesus. Honestly, I was pretty skeptical at the start about paid DLC content, considering Eugene's previous track record with war game facts and DLCs. Mainly the Israel and uh, Red 4 DLC really turned the game into the Yom Kippur and Yugoslav Wars as everyone was just playing Israel and Yugoslavia as they were pretty broken. And I hoped that the same thing wouldn't happen to Steel Division. And for the most part, it didn't. A lot of the new divisions that they added were great and were fun. Commandos and Luftroth were gimmicky as hell. But fun to play. They're, they're frankly not the best divisions to play, but if you just want to have a bit of a giggle, they're good to go. Ninth Panzer Division was a no-nonsense Panzer Division that worked pretty well. And 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 then you got four farmers. They were good. Way too good. Like Jesus Christ. They had good economy all around. They could spam tanks left, right, and centre. They could get two Stuarts. A minute. Two Stuarts a bloody minute. The Hellcats were insanely unstoppable because there was a 100.1.2 kilometer unit that could kill every single other A-phase German unit and also suppress AT guns as a lot of AT guns like Pack 38s and smaller packs couldn't hit it at 1.2 kilometer range. Really, they were just too good overall. How it really worked with Four Farmer is they would just form a death ball. And this death ball of Stuarts, of Hellcats, of B-26 Marauders, you could not penetrate. And it just became not fun to play against them. A lot of replays around this time and a lot of players were just playing Four Farmer because you could win easily playing as Four Farmer. And around this time I did take a bit of a break from the game as I was just sick and tired of every single map so as me playing Axis involved having to fight against Full Farmer. Oh, and uh, also there was a new game mode. You started a little bit closer to the enemy. It was pretty cool. October saw the Ace of Spades update, which gave us some more unit skins and brand new Attack and Defend game mode. Attack and Defend was something completely different within Eugene RTS games as a whole, as it was a player-on-player -player scenario mode. Instead of fighting over the entire map or map points, it was much more streamlined. Simply put, one person attacked, one person defend, and that's really it. But even with such a simple game mode, it was fun as hell, as it played completely different to how the previous game modes worked, and it was much more streamlined as the divisions were balanced individually according to the game mode, and it's pretty good for new players too, as it gives new players a more structured objective that they have to go to instead of throwing them in and saying hey just capture the entire map and it was fun i liked it quite a bit yo it did require some balance changes so december would see the official paradox tournament it was a bit of a shame that they couldn't actually do it a little bit earlier into the game's lifespan but it did get quite a lot of players and overall, it was pretty well set up. Though it wouldn't finish till December. Also, we got the Back in Black update, which allowed us to play Breakthrough in 2v2. Added six new units, which were pretty decent overall, as well as doing some balancing. Some of the major balance changes being 21st Panzer is now much more effective during A phase. They made the sermons much more deadly, and the Fourth Armor Division only got nerfed. Just just a little bit, yo. 
So December we'll see the Santa Claus update. Now the interesting thing about this update is they allowed a public beta test and for everyone to try out instead of just going for a private beta test, which they usually did with previous updates. Two of the big changes in this public beta test was the ability to put anti-tank guns inside of buildings, six pounders and below, and put tanks inside a forest. Some people claimed that uh, this made the game more like war game, and yeah, he is correct, I would say. Fortunately, in my personal opinion, they didn't have these two features once the update was fully released, as I really don't think they contributed that round to the already gameplay flow of Steel Division. And also having an anti-tank gun inside a building was extremely cheesy. But they took everyone's opinion in a survey and then released the update on December 21st. Some of the major changes was the critical and repair system allow you to finally repair broken tracks and also making vehicles more accurate at close range. Also, vehicle speed was heavily increased for majority of vehicles allowing you to get from A to B much more faster. As well, there was a photo contest for the update. And well, you ran to get a GTX 1080 and a pretty nifty t-shirt. I even submitted my own. Perfection. And slightly off topic, throughout the entirety of 2017, Wargame did not receive a single update, leaving the state of the subreddit in a permanent comatose of memory. And well, that really sums up the activity for Eugene throughout the entirety of 2017. Overall, Steel Division, I say, is a pretty damn good game. It's an improvement over the War Game series, and I think it was the right direction to go. It's a lot of fun. It's just a shame it couldn't garner the player base that it potentially could have, and that's usually the reasons I mentioned earlier. But really, what's going to happen next? Last year, a lot of us was hoping for War Game 4, but instead we got Steel Division, so take all of this with a grain of salt. I personally think Eugene's going to keep with the Steel Division franchise for now, and they could either do a Battle of Bulge expansion pack, taking a little bit later into the war, maybe an Eastern Front Operation Bagatron expansion pack to, well, get some T-34s and Russian equipment on the field, or what I'd like to see personally, I think it'd be a cool idea, is a Steel Division set during the Cold War. Late 70s, early 80s, just, just Cold War equipment with the Steel Division type of gameplay. That's, that's really it. I think that'd be a cool idea as you'd really be bringing, hopefully, the War Game and Steel Division player base together. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm hopeful. My major concern is really due to DLC. And really, it's just four farmed because this game is really well balanced. It's just four farmed yet it's still extremely overpowered compared to everybody else. And considering it's been in this state for three months now, it's a little bit ridiculous. And it was one of the main reasons that really hindered War Game Red Dragon, because the DLC nations such as Israel and especially Yugoslavia completely ruined the public balance matches. That you had in war game because if you weren't playing either two divisions or heck even finland you weren't going to have a good time because you're just going to get steamrolled by extremely cost efficient units i mean it took him um, three months as well two months to fix maglands in war game it's just is a bit of a concern personally and i hope that doesn't happen to steel division because right now everything's good it's just fourth armored that's a pain in the butt and really do need to get hit by an earth bat in my personal opinion but just as long as they could hopefully curve that issue i think steel division will live on to be quite a good game and well i think i'm gonna end off here yeah is the entirety of 2017 summed up i hope you guys enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys next year So I get a lot of lovely comments throughout the year and I want to share this time at the end of the video to show you my favourite comment that I've received throughout the entirety of 2017. 
And so the context isn't important, but how it goes is Tactical Outcaller outcalls me by saying, I thought you moved on to Steel Division, chillin'. You're going to finish Unit of the Reek 2. You still have a bunch to go. And Mr. ID Tagged responds back with, Don't insult Rangru. He's run more stroke array from losing his speech entirely. Damn. God damn. Just how we act common is structured and set up and delivered. It's just bloody absolutely on me. Anyone smell burnt toast?